Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Wait for it, wait for it. Today, we're talking all about patience. When there's a gap between what we expected to happen and what is actually taking place, our reaction doesn't have to be frustration and anger. What if our go-to response to the unexpected and sometimes the incredibly difficult was patience and understanding? Well, we're talking about it today. Well, what's up, Epic Online fam? If we haven't met yet, my name is Emily and I'm the pastor for Epic Online and welcome to Epic Everywhere, practical teaching to help you grow in your faith no matter where you're at on your spiritual journey. And welcome to anyone who's new to Epic Online today. Whether somebody invited you or you found us through a search or a scroll, we've been expecting you and we're so glad that you're here. We believe church should be fun and meaningful and make a difference in your life and that's exactly what we hope you experience with us today. So how exactly do you get connected here? Well, first up is to text in. This is something that we actually do each time we're hanging out together. You can text in a few different ways. You can text here to 215-999-8575, or you can scan the QR code. And then when you text us, we'll text you right back with a link for our Next Steps Hub. We actually customize the hub each week for you with some resources that we think will be helpful. So up on the hub, you'll see a spot where you can let us know how we can pray for you. Hey, shout out to Jim, who's part of our Epic Online fam. He hangs out with us on Sundays at 8 a.m. for the episode premiere, and he's been so diligent in asking for prayer. It's been such a gift to pray for him and his family and whatever they're facing. So what does that look like for you? We would love to partner with you in prayer today. So go ahead and drop that request in the hub. Well, last week we got to celebrate Mother's Day and the incredible impact you all are having on the world around us. To put it lightly, it takes a village to raise kids and it's so awesome to continue to watch the impact that Epic Youth gets to play in that. They're creating spaces where youth feel seen and known and represented and where they can grow in a really intentional way. We'll actually be hearing today's message from our youth pastor, Michael. And guys, we've got a cool announcement. For the first time ever, we're launching Epic Youth Camp that'll take place on July 10th. It's gonna be an amazing week full of fun and connection and spiritual growth for these kids. So if you're in the Philly area, you've got youth, you know of some youth, you can learn more and get signed up by heading to the hub or our website, epic.church slash youth. And thank you so much for your generosity. You know, as you make giving a priority, it's helping us impact an entire generation. There are so many kids that need to know that they matter and that there's a God who loves them and has incredible plans for them. And you're giving, it is making such a difference with that. So to give today, you can do so on the hub or head to our website. Well, today we're wrapping up our series called In Step, talking all about patience. So let's go ahead and get to today's message. What's up, everyone? My name is Michael. I'm the youth pastor here at Epic. And hey, I'm so glad you're hanging out with us for church today. We have been in a series called In Step, where we're walking through this verse in Galatians chapter five that reads like this. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So we've been walking through this verse and so far we've learned that really why we need the Holy Spirit in our lives in the first place, right? Jesus actually told his disciples that it was important, that it was actually imperative that Jesus leaves because they needed the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We talked about that in week one. And then we learned that this awesome, amazing list of things that come into our lives when we're keeping in step with the Holy Spirit, those things are actually indicators telling us just how we're doing as followers and believers of Jesus. And then in week three, we started walking through these awesome gifts one by one, the first one being love. And we learned what real love looks like. And we asked the question, what does love require of me? 
And we were reminded that as the church, we are our best selves when we love like Jesus. Then we talked about joy, right? And we learned that happiness and the pursuit of happiness, it honestly doesn't leave us happy in the end. And we learned how to and why we should actually pursue joy instead. We then talked about peace and what real peace looks like and where we find it. We find real peace in God's presence. This week, we're going to conclude our series by talking about patience. That's right. It's time for the hard one. Patience is hard. It's, it's a difficult one on this list. Let's be honest. We all want love in our lives, right? We all want love. It makes us happy. It makes us feel good. It uplifts our spirit. We all want joy. If you don't believe me, just think back to any time anyone asked you, how you doing? Hey, so-and-so, how are you today? Most of the time, your response is, I'm good. Because we want people to see us as good, happy, joyful people, even when we're not really happy on the inside, even when we're not in a joyous state. We tell people, yeah, I'm doing good. Just think, you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, I hope today is just a terrible day. Like, I hope it's just awful. My goal is to cry three times before lunch. That would just make my year. We don't do that. That's crazy. It's clear that we all want joy in our lives. And I don't even have to focus on how important peace is, right? We all need peace. You can look around our world, around our city, around your city and see violence, see insecurity, see anxiety. We need peace externally and we need peace in here, internally in our hearts. We need those things. But when it comes to patience, patience is a little bit harder. We'll pray for love. We'll pray for peace. We'll pray for joy. It's a little bit more difficult to pray for patience because patience means our normal desired way of doing things has been interrupted. Patience is a pause. Patience is a ah, a little bit of grind and tension there. I remember my first time visiting the city I was super excited to get a cheesesteak, super excited to be in Philadelphia to get a Philly cheesesteak, right? So I went to this place and I'm in line and I'm excited. It's a long line. I'm thinking this place has to be great. And I finally get to the window to order and the lady's like, what do you want? So I'm looking at the menu thinking, okay, what do I want? And she's like, um, hello, today, what do you want? So I'm like, just thinking, uh, 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 I, 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 I want a cheesesteak. Well, you want to tell me what kind of cheese you want on your cheesesteak? I'm like, uh, uh, I'm sweating at this point, right? Like, what is going on here? I, 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 Swiss. I don't even like Swiss cheese. I just said that because I'm stress ordering at this point. So I get the sandwich and I'm eating it. And she's like, all right, move out of the line next. And I'm like, dang, this lady is something else. But I was interrupting her normal flow of ordering. I was creating a break in her desired process patience. Am I right? Patience is something we all want other people to show us. Like, hey, be patient with me. I'm struggling. I'm new at this. I'm not the best. Be patient. But patience is something that's a little bit more difficult to show other people. Let's be honest. Patience is hard. And the bad thing is, the thing that makes it even worse is if you pray for patience, if you're like, God, please help me be a more patient person, you'll be stuck in traffic all the time. All the time. Your cell phone service will be the worst cell phone service on the planet. Every other carrier will be better than yours because yours is just slow. Or if you pray really hard for patience, you might end up like me and have a toddler in your home. That is next level patience. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Isaiah, but this kid, this kid, he has learned a new three letter word that is about to be the absolute death of my patience. Take a guess what that word is. If you guessed why, you nailed it. This is just a normal, typical conversation in our house today. Isaiah, Isaiah, don't touch that, don't touch that. Why? Because it's hot, baby. Why? Because I'm using it to cook. Why? So we can eat, dude. We're hungry. Why? Oh my gosh. If you ask why, one more time. It's driving me crazy, but I feel like I have to give them a valid answer because I grew up in the house that answered that question 
because I said so. And that drove me nuts. So I'm like, I have to help him. I have to bring him along. I have to teach him real reasoning why. But bro is testing me. <laughs> like Every single sentence that comes out of my mouth, his response is, why? And he's cute and he's adorable, but patience is running thin. If I hear the word why one more time, you're like, dude, be patient. He's two. Patience is hard, am I right? Patience is tough. So maybe you're thinking, like I was thinking, why don't we just skip this one? There's lots of other things on this list. I mean, kindness, kindness sounds nice, right? Goodness, who doesn't want goodness in their life? There's plenty of other options here. Let's just jump over patience and then we'll come back to it maybe at a later time. Patience, and eh, we don't really need that one, right? Let's just skip it. Well, the truth is we can't skip patience. Patience is critically important because patience isn't the price you pay, it's a gift you've been given. I'm gonna say that again, patience, it isn't the price you pay, it's a gift you've been given. Patience isn't just the end result of an unwanted interruption, patience is our ability to overcome difficult circumstances. Patience isn't just what you're left with at the end of the day at the DMV, patience is a gift from God. And there's a story in the Bible that I think illustrates this beautifully. Maybe you've heard of the woman with the issue of blood. It's about this lady who's had a disease for 12 years and she's tried everything to cure it. She's literally spent all the money she's had on doctors, tried every single medicine there is and no cure. And what makes matters worse because of this disease and her culture, she's considered unclean. So she's ostracized, she's removed from society. So she loses her family, her friends, and any hope she has of finding a cure. She's broke and alone. But then she hears about this miracle worker named Jesus, right? And he just so happens to be in town. So she's like, great, I'll go to him, he'll heal me, problem solved. Except she's unclean. She can't go around him, she can't go in public. If she got close to him, it would be very bad for her. So she comes up with this scheme, this idea. You know what? Actually, when Jesus goes places, there, ten, there tends to be a large crowd around him. He tends to draw a crowd. Wonder why, he's a miracle worker. So she's thinking, I'll use the crowd as cover. And she comes up with this idea that if she can just touch his clothes, she'll be healed. So she, she's gonna slide through the crowd, just grab his clothes and hope that that heals her. And guess what? This crazy plan of hers worked wild story. She just touches the bottom of his robe and then all of a sudden a 12-year disease disappears. It's a beautiful story of her perseverance and her faith. And we could end there and be like, oh, that is awesome. Like, way to go, girl. Way to go, Jesus. And like, end of story, right? But what if I told you that this story is actually an unwanted interruption? You see, there's this guy named Jairus who is actually a very important person in this time, he's a political figure. And he runs to Jesus because he has a problem. His daughter, she's dying. So he runs, Jesus, please, you have to help my daughter. Please, please, please. My daughter is on her deathbed. Jesus, I need you. And because Jesus is good, he's like, okay, I'll help. So they're on their way back to Jairus's house. And then this happens. Jesus went with him and all the people followed crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors over the years and had spent everything she had to pay them. And she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Think about that. She heard about Jesus. So she came up from behind through the crowd and touched his robe for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. And immediately the bleeding stopped. She could feel in her body that she had been healed from this terrible condition. We just talked about that, right? Beautiful story. But then it gets a little weird. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched your robe? But he kept on looking around 
to see who had done it. So picture this, right? Your daughter is on her deathbed. I know it's super morbid, but just bear with me for a second. Your daughter is on her deathbed, and the only person that can help her agrees to help her. But then on his way, he gets distracted, and there's an interruption. And all of a sudden, just out of the blue, he starts asking, who touched me? Think about that. Like, Jairus is probably thinking, Jesus, there's hundreds of people here. All 50 of those guys touched you. What are you talking about? Like, come on, don't forget my daughter. Hello, in trouble. Let's just forget about who touched you. I mean, you've been touched by tons of people. Let's, let's go. Like, hurry up. It's, I'm getting a little impatient. There's a lot on the line here. But Jesus kept looking around. That's what it said. Going from person, did you touch me? No, it wasn't you. Okay. Well, what about you? Was it you? No, no. What, was it you? Then you get the guy who was kind of like me at the, the cheesesteak window, just like, oh, Jesus is talking to me. He seems upset. What's going on? Um, 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 I, I, I might have touched you. I, I don't know. I don't know. If I touched you, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I, it was an accident. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus is going through this crowd and looking, trying to figure out who touched him. A crowd of people bumped shoulders often. I'm sure Jairus was getting a little stressed, probably some tension there, right? But the Bible actually says in another place that the woman did not reveal herself until she knew she could no longer stay hidden. She did not want to be found. And I mean, hey, I get it, right? Her life is at stake just for her being in this crowd. They could kill her because she's here. And on top of that, she has had a disease for 12 years that has disappeared because she touched a guy's robe. And now he's looking for her. What kind of power does this guy have? I'd be scared too. Now he's looking for me like, oh, I have to hide. That's a scary concept. Her entire world has changed in a moment. I'd want to stay hidden too. So how long do you think Jesus was looking for? Five minutes? 30 minutes? An hour? How long do you think it took Jesus to find this woman? How many people in the crowd do you think he asked, did you touch me? Meanwhile, Jairus is like, dude, come on, please. I'm sure patience is running a little thin. And then to make matters worse, when Jesus finally finds the woman that actually touched him, they have a full-blown conversation. No rush. No hurry. Hey, how you doing? It's great that this happened to you. I'm, I'm Jesus. I love you so much. It's a great day. You're going to live the le- rest of your life in total harmony. It's not what she said. That's not how it works. But a long, drawn-out conversation. And Jairus is just like, uh, hello. Wondering. Waiting. Questioning. What is Jesus doing? I mean, after all, this woman was a nobody. She wasn't even supposed to be there. Jairus, he was a somebody. And I get that that shouldn't matter, but let's be honest, it does, right? Even in our world today, we treat people with status better than we treat people without it. You can look at any high school in America and see that. So Jairus, I'm sure, is becoming a little impatient. And it doesn't get any better. By the time Jesus finishes what had to seem like a four-hour conversation with this lady, someone arrives letting Jairus know, your daughter has passed, man. Wow. What would you do? How would you feel? The one person on the entire planet that could save your daughter, that could fix your situation, slows down gets interrupted by a quote-unquote nobody. Meanwhile, you're just waiting. And what you needed doesn't happen. How would you feel? Patient? Probably not. Probably tense. Probably angry. Probably frustrated. Probably impatient. But if if patience is an indicator of us keeping in step with the Spirit, mm, how do you handle that situation? How would you feel? Better question, how do you feel right now in your very real life when things don't go your way? 
when you don't get the job that you wanted, when your boss is breathing down your neck, how do you feel? How do you feel when the employee doesn't turn in the project on time? How do you feel? How do you feel when the kids are slow and they don't get ready in time? Like little things, how do you feel? When your spouse makes a mistake, when your dating life isn't advancing like you thought it should, when you feel like God has let you down, when you take a need to Jesus, Jesus, I have this problem, help, just to see the need go unmet. How do you feel? What do you do? Do you curse him? Do you turn your back on him? Do you continue in belief while really carrying this deep-seated doubt and disappointment? And hey, I get it, man. I'm not very patient myself. When it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, this one is really hard for me. That's why I started off by saying patience is hard. I have a short fuse. But if we're going to keep in step with the Spirit, patience has to be a part of our lives. And we have to know that how we respond in difficult circumstances, it matters. Patience matters. And what's crazy about this story to me, the Bible gives absolutely zero indication that Jairus was anything but patient. There's no concept or thought or implication at all that Jairus was angry, frustrated, short-fused. It's not there. And don't get me wrong, the Bible loves showing how many people didn't like Jesus. It's all throughout the Gospels. But we don't find that with Jairus. As a matter of fact, when the messenger shows up to tell him that his daughter had passed away, even the messenger speaks respectfully of Jesus. The teacher, don't bother him anymore, he says. Nothing but respect and patience. Why? Because for Jairus, Jesus was the only option. There was no plan B. Jesus was the only one and the only thing that Jairus could turn to to solve this problem. He was the only option. And I get it. Like, that's crazy to stay patient in a moment like this. I've only been a dad for two years, and I'm a thousand percent sure I would have lost my cool. Like, I would have exploded in this moment. But Jairus just keeps in step because Jesus was Jairus's option. It was just Jesus. So as we begin to close this series, ask yourself, do you have other options? Do you have other things you turn to when stuff gets difficult, when interruptions happen, when things don't go the way you planned? Do you have other things you turn to? And if so, I mean, let's be honest, no wonder it's hard to be patient, right? Because if one thing doesn't work, you just throw it out and try something else. If that doesn't work, you just throw that out too. Because after all, you've got options. But not Jairus. I'm sure Jairus tried doctors. I'm sure his daughter took several different types of medication. But none of them worked. So Jairus turned to Jesus, because that's the problem with multiple options. Eventually, those options fail us. Eventually, they're not enough. Eventually, they don't solve the problem. That is why it is so important that we keep in step with the Spirit, because God is the only one who can help us in our time of need. God is the only one who can look at our situation, even when we think it's not going the way we want it to, and be there. That is why it is so important that we keep in step with the Spirit. That is why it is so important that Jesus is our number one option, because as we've learned throughout this series, love, joy, peace, and patience is the byproduct of it. When we follow God's leading in our lives, love becomes real, becomes genuine. Joy becomes more than just an emotion. It becomes a way of life. Peace becomes so powerful that we can't explain it. Even in moments when we shouldn't have peace, we do. And patience becomes something we actually pray for because we know that patience, it isn't just the end result. Patience isn't what we're left with. Patience is a gift from God. Which brings us back to our story. Jairus gets the news that his daughter has passed. I'm sure he's weeping uncontrollably. 
And then it catches Jesus' attention. Hey, don't worry. I've got this. Such an amazing moment. The only person who could help Jairus. Jairus is thinking we didn't make it in time. Jairus is thinking it didn't go the way it should have. Jairus is thinking we've run out of time. Jairus is thinking my patience didn't quite come through. But Jesus says, nah, God's timing, my timing is everything. I've got this. And the next thing you know, Jairus' patience turns into anticipation and his anticipation turns into hope. And the next thing you know, he's, he's excited and he's believing again and he's hoping again. And then he finds himself holding his very alive and very healthy daughter. And then Jairus sees God's timing is perfect and he never fails. And to prove that to us, he gives us patience to walk the process out. Patience builds something in us. It builds a trust in us that we can believe in God no matter what. Even when it doesn't make sense, even when it doesn't feel right, patience is a promise. It's not the price we pay. It's a gift we've been given. That's why we've got to have it. That's why we've got to keep in step with the Spirit. We need these things in our life. We need God's love. We need God's joy. We need the peace that God brings, and we need the ability to live in patience because it's a gift. Think about it. Jairus didn't just get to see one miracle that day, but two. Every time Isaiah asked me why, which is literally all the time, every time he says, why? I'm getting to teach him. I'm I'm getting to grow his thinking ability, to develop his brain. What a gift that is for him. What a gift that is for me to be a part of that. When we walk in patience, when we live patiently, when we let the Holy Spirit guide our lives, and when we keep in step with him, it is a gift that we get to receive. Isaiah is going to be a better man one day because the questions he asks now. And I get to play a part in that. What a gift. It's a gift to us and it's a gift to the people around us when we live, act, and respond in patience. That's why we need it. Makes you a better husband. Makes you a better wife. Makes you a better son or a better daughter. Makes you a better boss. Better employee. A better student. A better person to date. Patience as evidence that we are keeping in step, as an indicator that we are keeping in step with the Holy Spirit's leading in our lives, changes the way we think and act because we know, hey, storms end. Patience builds peace. We know, hey, even though my situation might not be the happiest right now, I can still have joy. Patience builds joy. Patience is what allows the brokenhearted to love again. They all build on each other. They're all gifts that the Holy Spirit, fruit that the Holy Spirit gives to our lives that helps us be better us and helps us enjoy life more. That is why it is so important that we keep in step with the Spirit. So since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you because you are good. You are faithful. God, we just ask that you help us be more patient. Help us be more patient with ourselves, God, when we get frustrated. God, help us be more patient with our coworkers, with the people around us, with our children if we have children, with our spouses if we're married, with uh, our boyfriends or girlfriends if we're dating. God, help us just be more patient people because as we've learned all throughout this series, these things indicate how our connection, our relationship with you is. It indicates how we are doing as allowing you to be the leader of our lives. So God, let us be patient people and let us trust you in the process. Let the patience in our hearts that you give us, let it help us know, hey, even if things aren't okay right now, God's got this. God, you've got this. God, help us see that, help us know that, and help us be patient in the process. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for all you're doing. It's in your name we pray, amen. Awesome, guys. Love you. See you soon.
Well, thanks so much for that message, Michael. I'm so grateful that developing a spirit of patience isn't just left up to me, but I get to be in step with the spirit and through that partnership, really see a transformation that honestly, I once thought was pretty impossible. So what do your next steps look like for today? We want this to be a place where you don't just come and go, but you come and grow. Maybe there was something that challenged you in the message that you can start applying or learning about. Maybe your next step is to get connected here at Epic and get to meet some other people through serving on a team or being in a group. Maybe your next step is giving for the first time today. Whatever your next steps look like, we're grateful that you were here today. If you haven't taken time to text in, be sure to do that right now. And if you're new, definitely text in because when you do, we'll mail you a free t-shirt just to say thanks for being with us. That's a perfect next step for you. And we can't wait to see you all back here next week for a brand new series we're launching called what a wonderful world getting answers to some of life's most difficult questions we'll see you right back here next week